Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the process of the addictions and what happens when they come into play. You see, addictions all begin from a desire to avoid or escape our fears. Right? So when we're in our addictions, we have, are having a desire to avoid or, dis or escape the fears that we have. Yep? Everyone's fine with that? Okay. Now, there are two things normally that we do with our addictions. What they are is we normally have some expectations or we have demands. And these expectations and demands are the things we want our environment to do to fix our fear. So, you see this in play a lot, right? In governments and everything, every, everyday life. So, for example, there's a flood in Queensland. No, there's never a flood in Queensland, eh? There's a flood in Queensland and lots of people are affected by this flood. They have all sorts of things happening as a result. Some have lost their homes, some have lost their livelihoods, some have lost their, um, you know, their, their, some have lost their families even. And there's all these emotions that come up as a result of this loss from what we would call and what generally is called a natural disaster. Right? But all of a sudden, the government has responsibilities that it never had before to make some of these pains that go away. All right? Now, what we often do is instead of addressing the pains and feeling our own pain and realising that if we feel it, our pain will go away, what we do is we want the environment or someone in the environment to make the pain go away. So, for example, imagine for a moment that one of the reasons why my house got washed down the river was because the government did something up ahead of the river, you know, to a water course where they didn't clean it out or they, or they did clean it out, one of the two. They did something to the water course thinking they were doing the right thing. And as a result of them doing that thing, my house got washed away. Where's all my pain going to focus on now? It's going to focus on the people who did that action. Does that make sense? If I'm unwilling to feel my own pain, I will focus that pain on particular something external in my environment, whether it be a particular person, a particular organisation, or the government, and so forth. I will focus my expectations and demands. But we're not realising in that place that the expectations and demands are actually unloving in themselves. Do you think that a person who is completely loving ever has an expectation or a demand of anyone? Well, no. The truth is that when you are completely loving, you will never have an expectation or demand of any other person. In fact, you won't even expect that they treat you nicely. You won't even expect that they might not kill you at some point. You won't have that expectation. And you'll be joyous in not having the expectation. You'll actually be happy about not having the expectation. So every expectation and demand we have is unloving. But it's the addiction, the addiction to avoiding the underlying fears and grief that cause us to go into this place of expectations and demands. Now when we go into expectations and demands, what happens then? Whenever the expectation is met, we, go, we feel this emotion called happy or content. Right? And whenever the expectation or demand is not met, we go into this other emotion called anger, rage. Do we feel very happy? No, unhappy. Can you see that our own expectations and demands create our own 
unhappiness. You see, every single time I am addicted to someone else fulfilling an expectation, a demand that I have for me, I am now setting up a dynamic where my happiness is completely dependent upon my environment. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want my happiness completely dependent on my environment. And if you think about it logically, why would we? Basically, that means that any single person... There's how many people on the earth? There's a bit more than six billion. It's nearly seven billion now, right? There's nearly seven billion people on the earth, and I'm dependent on every one of those doing the right thing by me to be happy. What's the chances of that happening? Is there much chance of that happening? I've got, well, it's hard enough having one of them do something <laughs> that, that it fulfills my expectation or environment, let alone seven billion. So if I set up these expectations and demands inside of myself, not avo avoiding my emotions in the process, wanting other people around me, my environment, to actually fix my life and make me happy, I'm actually setting up a thing in my life that I'm always probably going to be unhappy. I'm going to be unhappy most of the time. That's the trouble with addictions, you see. A lot of times we think that they create our happiness, but the problem is they only create our happiness under one circumstance, and that is when people fulfill our expectations and addictions. That's the only time they make us happy. Now, I don't know about you, but it doesn't seem to me to be a very logical thing to do to make your own happiness so dependent upon everyone else in the, in, in, on the earth. And then if we add into the mix the spirits around us, how many of those are there? There's billions of them as well. So now I need all the people on earth and all the people in the spirit world to do exactly what I want to be happy. I don't know about you, but that seems to me it's going to be highly unlikely I'll ever be happy. Now, that is the problem with addiction. But you see, what we do, and most of us are very, very afraid of getting under the addiction. You see, remember from our previous diagram, we said the addiction is covering over the fear, and the fear is covering over our true causal cell, our true causal emotions, which is usually some grief. And can you see we're two layers away, even being in the addiction, we're two layers away from ever connecting to God. Because remember, it's only in this place here, in our causal emotions, which are often grief, that we're actually going to connect to God. Right? And so what, what we're doing is by staying in our addictions, we're preventing our own happiness, we're setting up expectations and demands that are never going to be met, totally illogical to believe they're ever going to be met because 6 billion, 7 billion people are never going to meet all of my addictions. Not in your entire life will that ever happen. So, so I'm setting up all these unloving things and on top of that, I am two steps away from connecting with God. Doesn't seem very logical, does it, in the end, if you want to have a relationship with God to actually stay in your addictions. But we are usually so afraid... Our fear is so great, palpable, we can't, we, we're in such a panic to get into any deeper emotions that our, it seems to us in this state, it seems to us that our addictions are a better place to live in than feeling the grief. And yet our addictions are totally illogical. It's totally illogical to stay there. Can you see? Can you see how crazy it is? Like we set up these dynamics in our life and yet, we, and we go for the thing that we think is going to make it all better, but in the process, we're guaranteeing it's going to be worse. And that's the thing we face with addictions. We can go through all the addictions of what we have, and we will cover some of those probably after our break, but if you can see the dynamic that we're setting up for yourself when you're in them, that's very, very important to breaking them. Can you, can you see? Like if, if, you, if you don't see this is the truth of what's happening with these addictions, in the end you won't want to break them. You want to live in them, but you're keeping yourself from God, you're keeping yourself from ha any form of happiness really in the end. Because it's highly unlikely everyone is going to ever meet your addictions or ever meet your expectations and your demands that come from your addictions. 
It's highly unlikely. And so you're setting up your own unhappiness. Does that make sense? If we can go to Lorlinton.